punishment outside of law because there are things that law did not predict and they're gonna come up. There will always be such gray areas. So outside of that, what, what do you do then when there are these gray areas and the people in government are abusing the gray areas and they're doing things that are not in the interest of the people? Locke responds by saying that there is no appeal to any force on earth. And all the people can do, if there's an abuse of prerogative, is appeal to heaven. What? Now this is very important. Now, so I've been talking about God because Locke takes uh, scripture to be an authority. Okay, Locke is still acting basically like a, St. Thomas Aquinas did. He says there are two paths to truth, reason and revelation. And he has been using reason and he's been, he's been arguing that, look, we can correctly interpret Revelation and still use it to establish the grounds of government. And he spent a whole first treatise arguing against the improper use of Revelation, and he suggested a proper use, okay, throughout the text. <laughs> and here, when he says that there's no appeal to anyone but God, he's saying specifically, in my view, that when you look at the structure of government, just logically, you will not know about abuses of prerogative. Okay? The gray area is gray because you're not there. The whole issue of prerogative is, is establishing trust. You have a representative who you trust and you believe, and you can all you can do is remind them that they have to act for your good. If, if they are doing something that's not for your good, you have to just be lucky to find out. Okay? Um, so I want to point out that this language of appealing to God has answers. So God sends prophets, right? And in this case, the prophets, the relevant prophets are whistleblowers. There are times when there are abuses of government. You're not, in the, the general public's not in a position to see the abuse, but there are inside people who are part of government who are privy and they find out, and they can inform the public. And because the public should understand, as Locke has articulated, that prerogative has a proper use, right? Then the government, then the people, once informed, can do something about it. Okay. But now here's the problem. This is, you know, this is very, this is old. Locke's made this articulation in 1689 when this text came out. Locke was lionized. Uh, after 1689, the Glorious Revolution happened. Locke was on the ship where Mary, of William and Mary, was coming back to England. He was part of the people who were in exile in Holland. He was, he was privy to the machinations that were going on to restore the English monarchy. And the English monarchy that was restored um, very much reflected the thinking of Locke and his, and his, and his peers. right? And what we had after that in the early 1700s was the, 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 um, the um, uh, United Kingdom. That was established in 1704, okay? Um, so Locke died shortly afterwards. But what we didn't have is protections for whistleblowers. And this has been a problem throughout the history of governments where we've had abuses in government because we have that famous saying from Lord Acton, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? So government, we should all expect and understand and, and not be surprised by, will have abuses of prerogative. So the problem of prerogative is a real problem that we have to solve. Now, flash forward to today, and we've had an incredible, let's say, profit arise, okay? And first of all, we have the development of technology. So who would have thought <coughs> that we would have the instrumentality to actually have transparent government, fully transparent government? <laughs> that didn't exist in Locke's time. That was a dream that maybe some people had early in our century. But it's now come about to where many people now can see the possibility and the plausibility of fully transparent government. And one of the great moments that helped us see how that could actually be achieved 
is the arrival and the um, actual implementation of WikiLeaks. As mm -hmm. now, we have this man Bradley Manning, who is currently struggling under imprisonment. And he just yesterday right. <laughs> got a day in court. Right. Right. Um, many people regard this man as a hero. And um, actually, one of the things I wanted to do was show you a video, but we're rushed for time, so I'm not going to try and do that. I just want to mention it. Where hopefully many of you have seen it, I, you know, the video that has um, a helicopter, Apache helicopter, oh, yeah, yeah. in Iraq, where two uh, reporters from Reuters, Reuters, excuse me, were murdered. Okay, and I use the word murder purposely because they were doing nothing wrong. Um, indeed, you can argue that they were in their professional capacity, and they were not just murdered by individual rogue officers, individuals, they were murdered by people who made a specific request from the chain of command that they be allowed to kill. Not only did they kill two reporters who were doing nothing violent, but they also killed a man who was driving his children somewhere in a van and who saw a bleeding man on the side of the road, stopped his van, got out of his van to help the bleeding man at the side of the road, and then those same Apache people who, who had, had injured this one person asked for, for, for permission to attack someone engaged in protected activity by the Geneva Conventions. You do not attack people who are, who are basically trying to administer medicine. He was trying to pick up the wounded and bring him to, and it was clear, there's no misinterpreting of this from the data, right? Um, his, attack, his request to attack was approved. They then found that they attacked two children. They found this pretty quickly. Their response at, at, at knowing that they had just shot two children was tough. They shouldn't have been in a war zone. Wow. Now, this is ass backwards. Right. It's the opposite. Yes. It's their duty yeah. to respect civilians and not attack them. It is not the duty of civilians to avoid battle. It's backwards. Okay? So this is what a human being, a soul, a person who has compassion, saw and knew was wrong. And this, among other abuses of power, our part, I don't know, I say a human being a person, I don't know, we, it's, it's alleged to be Bradley Manning, and in my view, if it is Bradley Manning, he's a hero. Yeah. Bradley Manning is, hero. Yeah. is performing the whistleblower function. He's keeping government honest. And we have to appreciate that the edifice of government breaks down if we don't have people to play this function. Exactly. And so we are confronting a dysfunction. We have a dysfunctional response to something that would actually make our governments sound, rather than embracing sound government that achieves protecting of rights and doing actions that are in the interest of all the people, we have repressive government that protects illegitimate behavior and that, that, that punishes people when they act in the public interest. So the need for WikiLeaks is that this is something that actually answers Locke's problem of prerogative. And when Locke imagined in his day and time that only God could help us, well, things have actually changed and progressed to the point to where it's not only God. We could actually set things up. Rather than be hostile to WikiLeaks, we should be trying to mimic this function and this resource, because that's what it is. It's actually a resource that could keep government honest. So what we, what I, what I want to submit to the Occupy movement is that we need to advocate for full transparency in government. Mm -hmm. And we need to change the dysfunctional behavior of regarding people who are acting for the public good as threatening, oh, yeah. and we need to protect them. Absolutely. Wow. So Absolutely. I hope I made sense. I hope I was clear, and I'd like to answer questions, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing what kind of discussion this has